welcome we are back here bnl courtside it's me your host with the most kp Ndovu. it's excitement all around we're here at the press conference for the start of the league it's 2014 and yes once again we are vying for this baby right here it's beautiful the 20 suns took it last season but who is going to take it this season there's a lot of excitement around the league there's a new team as well the doozy royals just too much excitement going on right now basketball is alive it is kicking here in Gauteng we're here at Wembley Stadium the games are all going to be here it's just a lot of excitement man I'm really looking forward to the season hey man let's check out the press conference this year marks our second season following a very successful 2013 season which saw Twani Suns emerging as the champions. We congratulate all those who were involved and thank them for laying a solid foundation for us to start building on. So BNL has got seven franchises that are located in various provinces. And through collaboration between ourselves and BSA, BSA, through their provincial structures, recommended administrators who they would like to ensure that they are developed to become better administrators through them running the franchises on behalf of the league. In this regard, each province has at least one club in order to ensure that the locals are given the chance to play their basketball dreams. There was a lot of new names that we were introduced to last year with youngsters such as Gosinati Festile, Lebisa Silebe, and a whole lot of young guys as well as veterans such as Craig Gilchrist who are coming in to really show the array of skills that had them known within basketball cycles. So a blend like that definitely pushed the league up to good ranks amongst the basketball community itself. It's a lot of firsts for us because obviously uh, we've just joined the league this year. Uh, joined the league as one well of the board of the BNL. Um, so we're still finding our feet, but we think our recruitment has gone pretty well. Everybody that we have been after, we have gotten. Uh, you know, that includes a lot of um, celebrated players in South Africa that have played overseas, players that have won MVPs at junior level, at tertiary level, at men's level. So we're expecting big things from them. Well, it's exciting for me. I mean, when the last edition of the PBL, when the Tuskers were still around, I played for the Tuskers, which you know, I played under the same owners that, uh, that, that are owning the 2 0 at the moment. So, with the 2 0 not being part of the BNL last season, you know, I played up in Joburg. But now that they, they're part of this season, it was an easy choice for me to go back to the team that I originally played for in the beginning. I mean, the Swanee Suns came out of 2013 as the champs, but this season, it's all up in the air. It's a totally new season, a totally new vibe out here. But one thing remains clear, basketball is on the up and up in Mzanzi. Everybody's out there to beat the Suns this year. Uh, we've managed to keep the team the same uh, and strengthen in one or two positions. Um, We've been, we've been at it, we've been practicing. Um, all the other teams have strengthened considerably. Um, we have another franchise this year, as everybody knows, from Peter Mattersburg, and they, they look uh, pretty strong. Uh, but on our side, we're staying focused, we're practicing hard, and we're trying to make it a repeat. Well, we've acquired the services of a couple of new youngsters, uh, namely uh, Libisa Selepe from Bombela Wildcats, who's also going to be the captain of the team. Uh, Mike Bakumbuta from the Bombela Wildcats. We've also acquired a couple of services of new youngsters, new, brand new, you don't even know their names, they're going to be fresh, fresh new faces. Uh, we've retained the services of a couple of our young players, Jonathan van der Bale, uh, Rodney Ganga. Uh, we've also got uh, the services of one or two uh, new foreign players that we've acquired. Uh, one is coming from Zambia, uh, the other one is Angolan. It's a good feeling, you know. It's a good feeling to be here. It's a good feeling to have the opportunity to play again. You know, my feelings are just, I'm an optimistic athlete. I want to give my best every time I'm out there. We definitely have something to look forward to because it's a different level of competition, you know. You get to play against Angolans, Mozambicans, guys that have a lot of international experience, you know. So it's just something to look forward to. I'm very optimistic about that as well. Look, man, I don't know about you guys, but the one constant word that I got 
was excitement. And going into 2014, that is clearly what we're going to see. The season's going to start June the 13th. You saw it. The press conference said it all. There is a lot of excitement going on right now. And I can't wait for the season to tip off. We're going to take it away right now. BNL Courtside is going to be with you every single week covering the action. Like I said, man, excitement is the theme going forward. Sakilas Tole running with the Doozy Royals 2014 season. Catch all the games live on Supersport. Twenty thirteen BNL season was a very good learning curve for the Free State Warriors team. Um, obviously, we took out a lot out of the season on what to expect there. Um, it was good for the, for the game of basketball. Um, the, the, the communication and the interaction between the community of basketball in Free State and, and the team itself grew immediately. I mean, on a weekly basis, you had people commenting, asking, expecting better stuff from the team. And that was good because that wasn't there in, in the past. So obviously that had a good impact in terms of when the speed season ended, you would have guys going back to the drawing board and say, you know what, I would want to play in the, in the BNL uh, one day. So guys, kids who were 18 years, 17 years, um, 16 years, are aspiring now to play in the BNL one day. Most of us thought, you know, it's only a few people that will recognize us. And, but uh, from last season, people were um, very involved. Um, they liked what they saw, but they were always disappointed with the performance. And uh, you know, as a captain, you have to somehow take that blame for, for the performance of the team. But they are really looking forward for the season. 2013 season was just a, a big thing for us because the team wasn't ready at, at that time. So, um, I mean, we, we played a few games in Uko, we, we lost quite a lot of them, so uh, it was big because it was the first time ever most of the players played in a professional level, so it was, it was quite an adjustment for us, a big, a big one. And um, we're hoping this, this season we're quite much better because we've got the experience and um, big, big guys in, on, on the court, obviously, so yeah. What we kept us motivating is that we need to come back at the courts and train harder because now we realize that uh, level of the game and competition level is very high. So what motivated us is we didn't actually look from the previous games but we're looking more on forwards, not try to judge from the previous games but then trying to focus on what's the next position. Having one, well, one player making the roster means that we're working towards something so yeah we're building, for, we're building towards big things this year. Um, I've never been selected to that extent and Getting the All-Star, it means that, uh, it, for me, it meant I needed to work much, even much harder to, to ensure that I keep the status this year. So it was, it was, it was quite, quite a big uh, achievement. One of our objectives is to make sure that the games we can win, we make sure we finish those games, we close them out, um, clean up our mistakes, our turnovers, clean up uh, on the boards, and make sure we, can, we, make sure we keep our position um, for the season. So if we do that, let me make sure we can make sure that the games we can win, we win those games. The tougher games, we will have to take as we get them. I'm El Vladi. This is Itumele Makonomakwe. Vuzi Sitole, Christian Golden Warriors. I'm from Velcro. Catch all the BNL action on Supersport. We bring it big. Thanks galore. Watch out for that this season. I'm the Warrior Players. Big time plays, BNL. I started with uh, AYDF in 2012 and they approached us about a life skills program that they were running through basketball to encourage the children of Alexandra and Mami Lodi, you know, and guide them in terms of um, preparing them for the future, you know, especially beyond metric. The program has gone on to spread throughout the, all the primary schools across Alexandra as well as Mamilodi. We were approached uh, by one of the uh, coordinators of this event, uh, Sifiso, uh, 
Sifisa currently is one of the players of uh, Egoli Magic and one of the org event organizers for the AYDF. Um, he phoned me and he said he thinks that it would be a wonderful opportunity uh, for the kids to meet the current South African Basketball National League champs and uh, obviously we want to bring back and give back to the community and uh, bring all the kids uh, to teach them about basketball. Uh, well, I think it's very important to have such projects in communities solely because to instill the, 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 the basic fundamentals of the game because obviously once you get to a higher level you know, uh, to correct all the wrong habits, it becomes a problem. So that's why we go back to the grassroots community and make sure these kids play basketball the right way. Basketball is not necessarily at the level where it should be in this country, but it can get there. And uh, it's just an initiative to show the youth of Africa that uh, they're the future with regards to basketball and uh, other sports as well. You know, in communities, a lot of things happening. And I think, you know, keeping these kids busy on the basketball court, it keeps them out of trouble and obviously give them something else to do you know we keep complaining that our kids are always at home on their play stages and whatnot and these kind of uh, uh, programs actually instill that that's that sense of activity you know, that sense of being out there being outdoors and actually being fit it's a way that uh, promotes confidence in them it gives them a set of skills that they can use it in, uh, in the future and uh, it can definitely make them feel like uh, they're somebody, you know, that uh, they can go out there in the world and do something regardless where they come from. Hi, I'm Tish Mabiza from the 20 Suns. Catch all the BNL action live and exclusive on Supersport. When he, was, he was like a professional player, so Waifun and I would take one of his sons because he's got two sons as an English with Kevin is an eldest one. Would be called a professional soccer god that would Kevin would choose at this sport basketball. When I started playing basketball, it was almost as if I was rebelling against the status quo at home because my old man was a professional football player. So when I realized that okay, you know what, I can't compete with this. Uh, I need to do my own thing. I need to chart on my own direction. I went to a practice, uh, when I got to DHS, I was too short, I made the under 14 seaside. Um, and then I had my growth spurt about a year or two later, and at that time, I really was watching a lot of NBA, there was so much coverage on TV, you know, you could see NBA games, you could see PBL games, you know, we had the great players of the past that we were looking at, so there was so much basketball around you. Nam Singh got a couple of players, or oh, Bano Bano, Michael oh, 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 Jordan, or oh, oh, Kobe Bryant, whatever we can call them. But in Nam Singh, this way, we go to the Alpha Stalis movie sport, which will be because of Kevin. Family is very important, and I think it's one of the things that we forget about in basketball because the basketball story is usually about, you know, a young guy coming from you know, inner city um, then shines and ends up becoming on the world stage. And then the family element sometimes gets lost. And I think that's where the European influence in basketball is important, that we, we get it right here in South Africa. In basketball, I've served under numerous uh, portfolios. I've been basketball provincial treasury uh, for the local uh, provincial association, of which I still serve till this day. I'm a deputy chairperson of the province. Um, so when the opportunity came about, basically, uh, with the BNL, I then made my uh, bid known to the board. Um, they looked at what I had to offer, they looked at my background, uh, and they felt that there was merit in my bid, and I think that's why uh, Doozy World Basketball Club is here for this season. 
and I hope we can uh, do great things. I was happy for him because I know what Utata Indo Aitandai, Utata Indo Engazu Tigaza Fei Legion, because he is Ilan in the Mazio Genam in life sports, Saki, a Pumeli Lenga Sempil is a basketballer, a Mazilian. So I was so happy I have to support him as a parent. One of the things that really makes me proud about the BNL is how they've incorporated a lot of the players um, into the frontline jobs. You know, I'm seeing guys presenting who know the game, who've got a passion for the game. Um, presenters in the likes of uh, KP, um, I see commentators uh, who are knowledgeable in basketball and I think that goes a long way because you know you can you can almost feed off that energy when you when you are dealing with someone who's got passion for the game. You can feel you know when a dunk takes place uh, that you know the person who's just reported this understands that this for basketball people is as big as a goal for soccer people or as big as a try for rugby people when we see a dunk and all of that. Um, you know, I'm, I'm very excited about that. I'm just glad to be back home um, and, and, and doing something productive in basketball. I think whether I've done tournaments on the side, uh, whether I've served in the official structures, uh, whether I've contributed as an event sponsor, uh, whatever it is that uh, has been necessitated at the time for me, uh, to be doing, I've always done in basketball and I'll always be doing that, not just as an owner, I'm available to serve in whatever capacity that basketball thinks at that particular point in time I can add value at. My older brother, uh, He's the one who taught me how to play. Uh, he played with me at Alex. I played first team with, the, uh, with him there. Um, it was good for me. Uh, he taught me the game. Uh, I really learned to love it. Um, he taught me how to work hard. So I knew what my ambitions were. I knew I wanted to go overseas and play there at, at a higher level. So uh, all my effort was put into that and uh, towards my studies to make sure I have that GPA to go abroad. And uh, the opportunity came uh, through DHS, uh, which was great because I was going on tour there. Uh, in 05 as a team and a couple of us uh, got um, scholarship offers there and uh, I mean uh, two of us uh, ended up going. Uh, it was a great experience for me. The season started I was really surprised uh, by the level of play, uh, the level of commitment uh, from the players uh, so it was great to see that and I was uh, really happy to be uh, with, uh, playing in that type of competition uh, uh, weekend in and weekend out and uh, it really helped me a lot. Uh, I mean, obviously, I'm uh, acclimated to all uh, the hard work uh, that comes in with, uh, with basketball coming up, uh, from overseas. So it was good for me to come out and uh, continue playing, uh, just not uh, collegiate. Doozy Royals is a new team, um, but we stacked with talent. Um, there's potential from 1 to 12. So um, the practices are going to be fun. Um, we're going to be battling each day. So um, the more you play with, be with, with good players, uh, the better you get as a player. So and uh, having having Kevin um, as an owner, as a former player, he played for for the national team, and uh, he understand he understands the game pretty well. So I think it's a it's a good plus for us. I just think the one thing we have in common on that team is winning. My name is Lerato Mpomuloi. I am a full-time mother, professional model, radio show host and a TV presenter and I'm also a basketball fan, huge basketball fan, in particular Boston Celtics, always a Celtic, forever a Celtic, no bloom. I got into the industry, the modeling industry, about 15 years ago and um, it was instigated by my mother. I was very, very skinny, taller than um, my peers, dark in complexion. So a friend of mine, Mholi Goma, <laughs> was a baller and 
he introduced me to the game saying, listen Larry, you've got the height, you've got the arms, you can grab a ball with just one hand. Why don't you try it? Ah, next thing. I said, okay, fine, I'll try it, I'll try it. And um, I did a little one-on-one -on -one with him. It was fun. And I, I got my first dunk, I think, ever. And, and last dunk, ever. Now, while, while he was coaching me and all of that. The love of ball kind of grew and grew as, as I'm, I mean, we all grew up with Michael Jordan, watching him and his antics, um, especially the tongue thing, that, the legend, we all love Michael Jordan. Um, but I had to be a big fan of Larry Bird, because <laughs> my nickname in high school was Larry Bird. Not because I could play basketball, because I was tall. I, I don't know, it didn't make sense. And then once I found out who Larry Bird was, uh, that's when my relationship with the Celtics began uh, in the early 90s. I want my kids to experience the camaraderie, the, just the culture of basketball itself in, in, in totality. It's a game that brings families together. I mean, I've been friends with the same ballers for years. It's, it's one of the few industries and sports, if I can put it that way, that when you become a family, you're always family. It, it ne never fizzles out. It's, it's not like the entertainment industry or the modeling industry. One day you're in, one day you're out. <laughs> but with ball, you're always in. Music links a lot of things. It links the entertainment industry, it links the modeling industry. The game of ball, there's always um, someone blasting a stereo at, at the games. You know, whether it's the tournaments, whether it's um, a real BNL game. I mean, it just brings more life to it. You, you can't have a full basketball game without, you know, some music blasting in the background because that kind of, it feeds the environment and, and it's, a, it's a total experience. I'm not a, a typical, what do they call them, model. <clears throat> I'm a bit of an anti-model because I don't consider myself a model. I am just a girl that happens to model. It's not what I, it's not who I am, it's what I do. And what I am is a music lover, basketball lover. Uh, I'm a comic book geek as well, which a lot of people would not kind of put together. I love Kung Fu movies, I mean, really. I mean, really. Yeah, so like, <laughs> it's one of those weird combinations where people, once they get to know me, they, they figure it out after, uh, you know, a short conversation that I'm not very typical. I'm looking forward to the BNL 2014. Shoo, 20 sons. I wonder if they'll make it a second time around, but we're on the streets. It's not going to be that easy for them.